Well, I guess y'all were wondering what I was going to do with the rest of these peppers. Well, I'm getting ready to show you. I'm going to make uh, cowboy candy. And I know you usually make cowboy candy out of all jalapenos. But I'm going to use my bell peppers and my sweet peppers here to make it. Because I need to do something with these. And I wanted some cowboy candy this year. So basically what I'm going to do is get my seeds out of my peppers and the stems. Guess I really didn't need the big knife. But we're just getting our seeds out of our peppers and the stems off the end. I'm not sure how much this will make because it takes a lot of peppers to make a jar full of cowboy candy. I've got several jars sterilizing right now in my pot, but I don't think I'm going to need even half of them. But it's always good to have them available if you need them. But you see how I'm doing it? I'm just uh, cutting this around. And I know normally you cut it up in little slices, you know, like little rings. And since these peppers are too big to do like that, I'm just going to put them in my food processor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make cowboy candy relish. I like to use that a lot better than I do the bigger pieces. And if you get one or two seeds in there, it doesn't matter because when you make the cowboy candy, you're going to put the seeds in there. <clears throat> that is, if you want the seeds in there. Usually you can't help it because when you slice it, you're, you're slicing the seeds with your pepper. And that's where a lot of the heat is, is in those seeds. But with this... You know, I'm not going to put all these uh, bell pepper seeds in there. I'm going to cut those out. If a couple get in there, that's fine. And this will be mildly hot because I went and bought a couple of hot peppers to put in this. But since it's not all going to be hot peppers, it's going to be a milder heat. And that's what I like. I don't like it extremely hot.
If you've ever made cowboy candy before, you know it takes a lot of peppers to make a pint of cowboy candy. And I've got it on the setting today that, that YouTube says is the best. But I don't know. I think a lot of people, I don't know if they'd rather watch it vertical like this so they can watch it on their phones full screen or if they'd rather watch it the other way. But I'm trying it this way this time and we'll see. There's nothing that goes to waste in my garden. <laughs> it either gets frozen, canned, or it goes in compost. I didn't have any uh, green tomatoes this year, or I would be making chow chow too. Oops. Oh, I stuck myself with a knife at the point of it. The thing I like about working with bell peppers is they're not hot. <laughs> and you can handle them with your bare hands and not worry about burning your eyes. Like I said, if you don't get every single one of the seeds out, that's fine. I got one little tomato. And I'm going to throw it right in there. <laughs>
and there may be one or two of these that are hot. I don't know. mildly hot. I'm going to leave some of the seeds in those. I just want the ends of it off. Now, if you prefer the cowboy candy, I mean, you know, the way they normally cut cowboy candy, slice it this way, and you don't have to put it in the blender. Just make little rings. But I'm going to put it in the blender because I like to uh, chop it up a little bit to make like a relish with it. So I have a cowboy candy relish instead of a the little slices. Seems like I can do more with them that way. Now these little ones, I'm basically just leaving the seeds in, and I'm cutting the stem off the end. These do look like hot peppers. I mean, they may not be, but they look like hot. <laughs> Some of them don't really get hot till they turn red. Some of them are hot even if they're green, it doesn't matter.
but I just wanted to show you that you don't have to make cowboy candy with just jalapeno peppers. You can use bell peppers. You can use other peppers. Just depends on if you like a lot of heat or not. If I did that, I put the good part in the bowl I'm going to put in the compost, and I put the bad part in my bowl that I was going to cook. <laughs> Plate to put these in because these are the hot ones. These are Serranos. These are what I'm going to add to these to make them hot. Just give them a little bit of heat because I, you know, that's all bell pepper. There's no heat at all in that. And there's very little heat in those little peppers because part of them are banana peppers. So we're going to add this bag of serrano peppers just to put some heat in there. That's why I'm putting the gloves on because these things are hot. And I'm going to leave those in this plate. All I'm doing is cutting the end of them off. But still, handling those hot ones, I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> Normally, I would slice them up. And I still might slice them up a little bit. In fact, I'll cut them in half. So they're not such big pieces going in the... processor over here. But I've already done a video on how to do it with just all jalapeno or hot peppers. So I wanted to come on here and show you how to do it with a, uh, if you like a milder heat, pepper. Some of this out of the way. Oh, no, I think I'm going to have to move a lot of my stuff over here. I got all my spices. <laughs> Can move it back later. Oh, 
I'll move the camera over here. So you can see better what I'm doing, I guess. I'm putting a handful of peppers in there. And then I'm going to put a couple of pieces of the hot pepper in there. Should be able to do it in three batches, I hope. this bowl out. And I'm just simply going to dump my chopped up peppers right in there. Whoop. Don't want to dump them in the floor. And if you see any really big pieces, you can throw them back in there. As I said, you know, this is going to be more of a relish than just the sliced stuff. in there at a time. Oh. Don't mind me, y'all. <laughs> you can't see that. I got it back over here. <coughs> it will take your breath if you stand over it and breathe it after you chop it up like that. Just those few um, hot peppers in there, it'll do it. Because those were serrano peppers, they're pretty much some of the hottest peppers there are.
and just continue on till you get them all ground up and add some of your hot ones Like I said, you wanted it just about like the consistency of relish that you see in the jars at the store. I'm going to turn that pot off because I got pot uh, jars sterilizing in there. I'm going to put the rest of these in there. <clears throat> Hopefully I didn't get too many in there. Got another breath of it. And it helps to rinse out your, your <coughs> your processor so they don't dry hard in there. And I'm gonna get some of this off my counter. Like I did, don't breathe it. <laughs> now we got that ready to go.
move that back a ways. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get my jars out of here. So they can be cooling off a little bit. And like I said, I know I'm not going to use all of them. And if I need more jars than that, I can go get more. No problem. down in the bottom of my pot. This is what I use in the bottom of my uh, big canner. It just lays flat down in there and it's a like a little platform that the jars stand on. It just keeps them from being on the bottom of the Well, I thought they would fit in here. It may not. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll probably put it in this one. Just don't think that's gonna work. I need the deeper pot. <laughs> big for this. Right now, I'm going to get all my stuff for my um, vinegar that's going to go in it. Which I need all this over here. <clears throat> Let's see. 
I'm going to use one cup of apple cider vinegar. And you know what? I think I've got more than a pound there, so I'm going to go ahead with two cups. I'm going to double the recipe because I think I've got enough peppers that I need it doubled. So that's two cups of apple cider vinegar. Um, let me dry my cup out the best I can because i got to put sugar in there. get into my sugar. <laughs> and since I'm doubling the recipe, I need um, three cups of sugar. I need a tablespoon of salt. And I forgot to get my salt, but I guess I can use this. Here, one tablespoon of salt. Okay, I'm going to put some pickling spice. Well, I thought I got it out. <laughs> Let's see. It's optional. You don't have to have pickling spice because you got all this vinegar. <laughs> <coughs> I'm going to put one teaspoon. of turmeric. Now remember, this is a doubled recipe, so that's one tea teaspoon of turmeric. A teaspoon of ground ginger. shake it out. I want to dip it out. No, that's not going down in there. So I'll use a half a teaspoon. And I'll just go down in there twice. I'm going to put just a little bit of celery salt. About a half a teaspoon.
It calls for the original recipe, one teaspoon of chili powder, but I'm gonna put two because like I said, I'm doubling the recipe. Now we're gonna heat this up. We're gonna bring it to a boil. And we're gonna simmer it for about three minutes. I'm definitely going to have to <clears throat> bleach out my dishcloth after this because I got that turmeric on there. And y'all know what turmeric does. It turns everything yellow. <laughs> I don't know if I like this vertical setting. <clears throat> it's all right for some things, but. But again, this is my version of cowboy candy. I just, for the heck of it, I took uh, green tomatoes, um, a little bit of bell peppers, and stuff last year. With the jalapeno peppers that I had left, the bell peppers, and I made the cowboy candy recipe, but I put it in the processor and I made like a relish with it, but I cooked it in the same ingredients and everything and I loved the relish. And I'm gonna put about two tables teaspoons of pickling spice there I had forgot that I left it over there on the counter but it's okay because it hasn't started boiling yet <clears throat>
But what we're trying to do is get it to a boil. And I know you can't really see that. But we're trying to get it to a boil. We're going to simmer it till it starts kind of thickening up a little bit. Because it will do that in this, uh, with this sugar in it. And then we're going to add our uh, ground up peppers or our chopped up peppers. <clears throat> but I love to add this stuff to uh, pinto beans when I cook them or chili. Uh, I use it as relish on like hot dogs. Any way you use a sweet relish, you can use this cowboy candy relish. Cause it, but it has just a little bit of heat to it. Not as much as if it would be if you had all just jalapeno peppers, but it does have some heat because, you know, we did put that package of Serrano peppers in there, which they're pretty hot. Yeah, basically what we're doing right now is dissolving the sugar. And I'm hoping I can get all of my peppers in here. <laughs> It takes about three minutes for the sugar to dissolve or for it to get hot enough to dissolve the sugar. Okay, again, while we're waiting for this, I'm going to go ahead and give you the recipe. I did double it. Because the original recipe, the way it was, it only makes two cups. This way, hopefully, I'll have at least four or five cups. About two pounds of jalapeno peppers or your bell peppers, and you can add a few hot ones. That's up to you. Two cups of apple cider vinegar. Uh, three cups of granulated sugar. And you can use half brown sugar if you want two tablespoons of salt, two teaspoons of pickling spice, that's optional, teaspoon of ground ginger, a teaspoon of chili powder, and a teaspoon of turmeric. That's exactly what I got in this pot. And I'm hoping it's enough to take care of all my peppers because I didn't weigh my peppers. I don't know how many pounds I got over there but I'm hoping there's about two pounds. Want to get it hot enough to where it's almost ready to boil. I'm 
think all my sugar's dissolved. <clears throat> this is going to be a pot full, I tell you. Okay, it's at a boiling point, so I'm going to start adding my peppers, my chopped up peppers. You see a bunch of water does come out of them. And as I said, if you want to make the typical cowboy candy, just slice your peppers. If you're going to use just jalapenos, just slice them. But I like the relish when I'm using bell peppers. Just getting my peppers. I don't want all that extra juice. And again, I just rinse my bowl out. So those, the peppers and the juice doesn't dry in the bowl. Now we're going to bring this to a boil again. We're going to boil it for about five or six minutes. But normally, if you slice the jalapenos and you're just using jalapenos, you would boil them about five or six minutes until they start looking like they're starting to shrivel up a little bit and they look kind of glossy. And that's the same way this is going to do, only it's the relish instead. <coughs> and you don't want to be right directly over your pot and breathe that those vapors because it will it'll ruin you, especially if it's all jalapenos. Even slightly, um, with mostly bell pepper and just a few of the serranos, the steam, the vapors coming up from that hot mixture, it'll take your breath. So you have to be careful with it. And those pub peppers were kind of cold or cool, so it's going to take a little bit to heat them up. I'm 
move that pot back on the back. That way it's not obstructing the view. It takes it a few minutes to start to boil again. Because remember, you put all those cool, kind of cold peppers in there. And it cools that vinegar water right down. But it's starting to boil. And like I said, we're going to boil it for about five or six minutes. Or a few minutes longer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be exact. And you stir it occasionally. Yeah, most of my, my peppers, I had the jalapeno peppers. And I did make it all in regular sliced uh, jalapeno cowboy candy. But like I said, I had a little bit left over, so I threw in some tomatoes. I threw in some bell peppers. I threw in some hot peppers. I even threw in some red peppers. And I threw it in the blender and just chopped it all up and made a relish, a cowboy relish. And I loved it, y'all. That's the reason I decided I'm going to do all these bell peppers I had left that way. Because they're too big to slice like the jalapenos. You know, you can't really slice them up like that. So, I'm just ruining this dishcloth again. <laughs> it's turning yellow, y'all. That's what turmeric will do. It turns everything yellow. That's one reason I decided to use this uh, metal spoon instead of the plastic one. Because if I use the plastic one, it turns it yellow or orange. And it stays like that forever. But boiling it like this, it uh, helps the spices kind of blend all together. Turn it up on high, really, to get it to boil, like it's supposed to be doing.
Finally, it's coming to a really good boil. <laughs> Just a couple more minutes. But I know you can see it boiling in there. Give it a little stir. Keep breathing it, y'all. <laughs> There, they have been cooking long enough. That's been about five to six minutes or more. Now, what we're going to do, <clears throat> see if I can get back over here so you can see my jars. Because I can't lower this anymore. My 
my jars are fairly cooled off. And I've got this little funnel that I'm going to put in the top of my jar. I'm going to get my jar close to the pot, and I'm just going to scoop this mixture in. I don't want it too full. I don't want it too packed down. Because we're going to add some of the liquid in it. Don't want to overfill them too full.
we're gonna need another jar. <coughs> I had already sterilized this one because I didn't know if I was gonna need it or not. I didn't think I was gonna need it. But it certainly looks like I'm going to. Now I'm just going to put <clears throat> some of the liquid back in the jar just to kind of fill it up. Not all the way to the top. You need about a half an inch from the top to, to the top of the um, want to make sure you leave at least a quarter of an inch to the top of the jar. Man, I'm making a mess. <clears throat> I gotta get the rest of this out. Still got some in here that I gotta strain out <laughs> to put in this one last jar. I think it just will just about make this one. <laughs> Probably can get just a tiny bit more out. 
and it'll make a whole jar right Now, what to do with go ahead and get that pot hot again with that water because we're going to be putting them in a water bath. Just tighten them down, hand tighten them. You don't have to tighten them too tight. I'm hoping I can get all of them in there. Maybe not. Did make it. <laughs> but now what to do with the rest of it, I'll show you. I'm going to put it in a jar. And that is going to be some great marinade. some beef brisket or any type of meat that you want to cook. Now I made some of that with uh, the real hot jalapeno. wondering if that would fit in a smaller jar. I don't think I need all of that. I'm going to try it. And if I don't get every single drop of it in there, that's okay too. Hmm. 
Got every bit of it in there. And I can put that in the, the canner after I get some of those out. No problem. We're basically going to bring that to a bowl. We're going to boil it for 10 minutes and then we're going to take the jars out and put them on this towel and let them cool. So that's a little bit different way to make your uh, cowboy candy rather than just make it in just regular slices like the normal recipe. And who knows, you might like it just as well as I do because I love it made into a relish. Should have had that pot boiling. And again, to get the turmeric off of your counter, it's going to turn it yellow. Just spray it with a little bit of bleach. It'll come right up. And then it'll bleach it right back out. See how pretty all that um, yellow stain is gone. And I'll have to do that to my dishcloth as soon as I get through washing all of this. Sponge. Probably, oh, here it is. <laughs> and I'm showing you every step right down to the nitty gritty because a lot of my followers want to see exactly how you do it from start to finish. So we're going to let that pot come to a boil. going to boil it for 10 minutes and then we're going to take our jars out so you can see how I take them out <laughs> Not difficult. I like to clean up as I go. <laughs> that way I don't have so much in the kitchen dirty.
most of my turmeric come out of my cloth just wiping the counter with a little bit of Clorox spray or Clorox cleaner. <clears throat> starting to boil so set your timer for 10 minutes and I'm not going to make you watch the pot I'm going to go ahead and let it boil for 10 minutes I'm going to take it out with my um, trusty pot holder thing here. It'll lift them right out of that hot water. This way. <laughs> I've got a video in about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. But we have time to get this done. I mean, it's almost done. I, I hate to turn the video off at this point and leave you hanging with the rest of it, so. I can put this one in later when I get these other ones out. They always say a, a, a watch pot never boils. <laughs> and how many of you think that might be true? That a, a watch pot never boils. Guess I can turn this just a tiny bit. Yeah, I've got so many viewers that want to see me in the picture with what I'm cooking. And sometimes it's very difficult, you know. It's difficult to get me in the picture with my pots and all my ingredients and everything else. <laughs> unplugged. There, it won't take up so much room that way. another five minutes and we should be able to take them out and it'll be done and I'll be able to put this one in the marinade yeah when you first put them in there you don't want to tighten them too tight just hand tight because some of that air will come out of them and then they'll seal How many of you have tried this before? Any of you make cowboy candy or even thought about making cowboy candy relish like I'm doing? <laughs> I definitely don't have as much as I did last year. I mean, I had my big canner full, but I just don't have the jalapeno peppers or the bell peppers this year. I was lucky to get what I did get. But if I'd have given up when they put us on water rationing, 
and hadn't have kept my plants alive, I would not even have gotten this much. So I feel grateful that I at least got, a, you know, a pot full of jars of my cowboy candy and some cowboy marinade right here to put on a beef brisket or any kind of meat that you want to uh, marinate. Even a steak would be good. I'm watching the clock, y'all. I know I got one or two comments in some of my videos. Can't you speed it up? Can't you speed it up? I said, well, I could if I had a camera that I could pause. But I can't pause mine. I have to stop it completely and then start a new video. And then you got to piece them together. And it takes so long to do that that sometimes I, I wonder if it's worth it. <laughs> couple more minutes. It'd be nice to have a video camera that I could pause and not have to piece the video together later. It's almost Christmas, y'all. Almost. I mean, it's already November. November's going to be come and gone with Thanksgiving before we know it. And Christmas will be upon us. So it just goes to show you, you don't have to have an actual big canner to can food. Now, unless you have meat that you're going to can. I don't can meat. I freeze meat. Uh, if you have a meat that you need to can, then you've got to have a regular canner that is made to, to can meat because it gets at such a high temperature. But... To do stuff like this, all you need is a big pot, a pot big enough to put your jars in and submerge them basically in water. And sometimes if mine don't go completely under the water, I don't worry about it because with the lid on it, it puts the hot steam on the lids and it does basically the same thing. Okay, they've been in there long enough. And it's kind of tricky because I've got this stove hood right over my pots. Well, really, it would probably help if I'd move my pot out to the front. That 
that's what I'll do. That way it's not directly under that. And I don't like this water because it's got chemicals in it. And when you bring your jars out of the boiling water after being in there for 10 minutes, it makes your jars look kind of cloudy, so you have to wipe them. I'm going to let that cool down just a little bit before I put this one in. But there you go, y'all. I'm going to let them cool. And you'll hear the tops pop when they're sealed. Some of them are already sealed. I can look at them and tell. Because some of them, see, you heard it. It went pop. That one just sealed. And I think the rest of them are already sealed. But there you go. I got six little half, more. I got four half pints, and I've got two basically pint jars of cowboy candy relish. And I've got a, a, a pint jar of cowboy candy marinade to put on anything. And it's mildly hot. It's not the hot, hot that it would have been if it was just all jalapenos or all the really hot peppers. I had every kind of hot pepper in my cowboy candy last year that you could grow. I had habanero. I had chili peppers, red peppers, um jalapenos, uh, I can't even think of the names of all of them, but there was like six or seven different types of really hot peppers that were it was in my cowboy candy last year. But I just didn't have the hot peppers this year. But this is going to be making a mildly hot cowboy candy because you saw the little package of serrano peppers that I put in there, which they're pretty hot. And I think that's going to add enough heat to the rest of the bell peppers and everything that it's going to make it plenty hot. I don't think I'll need it any hotter than that. But I'm going to go ahead and... Because that's still hot. Go ahead and heat that up and get that one going. Leave it in there for about 10 minutes. And then I can take them out like I did these. So there you go. There's my, um, well, I need to get a picture with it. My, uh, cowboy candy. And I'll see y'all my next one. Bye now.